go. All right, well, I got the fun facts for the Saints. So hope you're doing well, everybody. Um, today we receive a very special guest today, and today we we receive Saint Polycarp. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Nick. I've been looking forward to this all year. Been waiting for my feast day to, to come on your program. Well, so why don't you start by telling us about yourself? Sure. Yeah. You know, I think one of the first things that people want to ask me is, so Polycarp, this name Polycarp, not a lot of people are named Polycarp anymore, um, which is really too bad. You know, you don't see a lot of Polycarps around. Um, so let me let me take a moment to tell you about my name. Um, Polycarp comes from Greek. It comes from poly, meaning many, carpus, meaning fruit. And uh, so the way that I like to interpret that is uh, is kind of using using the, the passage in John 15, where Jesus says, you know, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so I, um, you know, I was given that name at my birth, but I came to understand it as, as maybe a mission, a mission to be the branch um, that bears much fruit for Christ. And so I've been very grateful for the name. Um, I mentioned the Gospel of John. Uh, the, the author of the Gospel of John, John the Evangelist himself, was actually a dear friend and a mentor of mine. He's the one who taught me about the faith. Um, so I was very grateful for his um, for his guidance, for his wisdom. And um, as I think back in my over my the course of my memory now, I can even remember him. You know, he he would turn to that passage a lot about how we are the uh, we are the vines, or he is the vine, and we are we are the branches. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually John himself too that ordained me a bishop in Smyrna. Um, and in case you're wondering where Smyrna is nowadays, I think you call the country uh, Turkey. So it's a it, it was a town in, in what is now a modern day Turkey. Um, so the first question is, um, how did you um, embrace your Christianity at a young age? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So good question. I um, grew up to, I, you know, I, I grew up in a very exciting time. There were people who were alive who had known Jesus, who had walked with Jesus. You know, I met, I mentioned my uh, my teacher, St. John the Evangelist, and um, it, it, from a very young age, I was, I was completely blown away by the, um, the preaching of these people that had known Christ, that had walked with him, that had heard his teachings, that had seen the great miracles he worked, that had watched him die. You know, John was at the foot of the cross with Jesus when he died, and he was there when, you know, Jesus rose three days later. Um, so to hear that beautiful preaching and to see the miracles worked by you know, many of the people that had, um, that had known Jesus himself. It was a, it was a wonderful time to be alive. And uh, as a result, I, I was able to give my life to Christ for, I think it was 86, 86 years. Um, um, what was the conversation about between you and Pope and um, Peter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Anicetus. Uh huh. He uh, he. So he invited me over to Rome um, to have a conversation, and there were many things that we spoke about. But what most people um, like to refer to now was was the one disagreement that we were never able to resolve, and that was over the date of Easter. So in Smyrna, in the East, we celebrated Easter based on the Jew the Jewish festival of the Passover. So based on the fourteenth day of Nisan, and. Um, that, you know, we, we thought that was a logical time for Easter. In the Western church, so in Rome, um, Anicetus and, and the Western church celebrated Easter based on, I think it was the, the first Sunday after the first full moon after the, the spring equinox. And that, um, so we had a different, we had kind of a difference of opinion in how we calculated the date for Easter. And we came together and we had a lot, a lot of conversation about, you know, which one it should be. And in the end, we didn't end up agreeing, but um, we left with a lot of respect. And um, one of the gestures that Anicetus made that really meant a lot to me was uh, he, he honored me by allowing me to celebrate the Eucharist in his own private uh, chapel in, in Rome. And so that was a way of saying, you know, that he, we were able to remain in communion. Our churches were able to remain in communion with each other, even though we celebrated that great feast on a different day. Um, so I really you know, admired and respected him for that. And we were able to part on good terms and he was able to, you know, to send us back and say, we can continue to celebrate Easter on that day, um, even though even though we left with the disagreement. Um, and one last question is, uh, 
So why does the, ax the axe say that uh, the flames did not touch you? Mm, ah, yes, the flames, my, my, my martyrdom. I get to wear this red sash because, I'm a, because I was a martyr. Um, so I, I actually had a vision in prayer at one point, you know, late in my life about, uh, I was praying and I had this vision that my pillow sort of went up in flames. And I, I realized that meant that that was going to be the, the, the cause or the, you know, the, the way that I was martyred. Oh. Um, and so, at, you know, the, the persecutions were going on and my captors arrived at the house where I was staying. And uh, I, in some ways I was expecting this, you know, I knew that this would happen at some point. So I invited them in and I cooked them a meal and asked them, you know, will you just let me pray for one hour? And they were busy eating, and so they were happy to, to oblige. And after I prayed, I think it actually went on for two hours. You know, I had a lot of people to pray for. But um, I came back down, and many of them were kind of wondering, you know, why should we put to death this, this elderly bishop? But they had their orders, and so they brought me into the arena. And um, at the arena, the, I, you know, they were trying to make me give up my faith. There was a lot of pressure to give up my faith in front of the, the great crowds. And so they, they thought that by threatening me with fire, that was a way that was going to get me to, uh, to renounce my faith out of fear of dying that way. But mm. I, I remember saying, what did I say? I think I said, so I said, oh yeah. I said, you threaten me with fire that burns for a season. And after a little while it's quenched, but you're ignorant of the fire of everlasting punishment that's prepared for the wicked. So, you know, that's sort of, I, St. Paul said, you know, to, to just, say whatever comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit put that on my heart to say, you know, I, I'm not afraid of this fire because I am more afraid of the fire of eternal punishment. And I, you know, I have had this wonderful long, you know, 86 years of loving and serving the Lord. And he has always been good and faithful to me. And so I, I knew that in that moment of my martyrdom, I would be good and faithful to him. And so they, um, you know, they, they prepared the fire. They, they, tied me to the stake and they set the fire and um, a peculiar thing happened, you know, and this happens with many of my other brothers and sisters in Christ. And even to St. John, you know, my dear friend and, and teacher, they, they tried to martyr him by putting him in a pot of boiling oil, but nothing happened. He was fine. And so they ended up having to exile him to Patmos, you know, where he wrote the book of Revelation. And so sometimes this happens with, with saints, you know, in an attempt to martyr them, um, it just doesn't work. And sometimes it's to give greater glory to God and that was sort of how I, how I, you know, heaven only knows the, the real reason, but that was my understanding because what ended up happening was, you know, I felt the flames just sort of like this warm embrace. They didn't, they didn't um, injure me in, or even burn me in the least. Um, and so in the end, I was, I was martyred by a spear, a lance piercing my side, which, you know, was, was a, a great and beautiful way to share in the glory of Christ, you know, who had his, his side pierced with the lance. Um, so I, you know, I think that's perhaps why um, the flames didn't, um, didn't burn me. Um, so maybe I could share in a little bit of the glory of Christ. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I, I always like to carry my book with me. This is, this is my, um, this is my epistle, um, <laughs> epistle, you know, my epistle of Polycarp to the, to the Philippians written by St. Polycarp, which I, I actually added the decorations there, you know, the vine and the branches, uh, which is a, a, a favorite of mine. Um, so I like to carry this book with me. Um, it's a, an epistle, so it's a letter. And um, maybe the only other thing, um, well, yeah, so I'd recommend it. Uh, get, it get yourself a copy and read it, some good bedtime reading. Uh, my, my other request would be pray for me. I, I'll pray for you from heaven, but, but pray for me as well. All right. Well, speaking of which, we have a, I have a prayer here. Uh, to you. So let's pray that. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love of creation, who were pleased to give up the bishop St. Polycarp, a place in the company of the martyrs, and to his intercession, that sharing with him in the chalice of Christ, we may rise through the Holy Spirit to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and with you, and the only the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Nick, for all of your good work down there on earth and for sharing our stories with uh, with the faithful. Thank you. Mm -hmm.